Hello everyone, Kerry Griffiths here, or as you also know me, Kerry the Crafter. So it's April 2024 and I'm doing an excited project. It's April. Um, don't know what day in April this is going to launch. However, I'm doing a project, a uh, collaboration with PM Artist Studio. Actually, I'm doing it with the M version of PM Artist Studio, which is Mariah. Um, Mariah is the daughter, Patricia is the mother. That makes Patricia Mariah PM Artist Studio. You get it. You got it. If you follow me, you already know about them. Now, um, we discussed last year that Mariah and I wanted to do a sort of swap and make. And our lives are very busy, so it's taken probably about six to eight months to get this organised. And we did put the word out to other creators and designers there. So I may not be the only one doing this. Um, Mariah and I announced that we were doing a swap and make. It would be nice if anyone else wanted to join in. Um, creators needed to find themselves a partner. Basically, you sent each other a parcel of stuff. And once you received that parcel, you obviously had to make something with it. Now, what do you make? You can make anything you like with the contents of the parcel. Here's my parcel from Mariah. Um, you can make anything or any things with it. You can add stuff to it. You can take stuff away from it. You can choose to use some stuff. You can choose not to use some stuff. Um, basically, it's just an inspirational pack to send you in a new direction. So I'm about to do this now. I don't know whether this is going to be two videos, three videos, four videos, five videos. Hopefully it's not five videos. I'm building, building the Great Wall of China again. Um, I can imagine it's probably going to be two, maybe three videos at the top. And the way that I normally do it is I normally launch all of my videos at the same time or at least a couple of minutes apart um, so that you don't have to wait around and go, I've got to wait a week for the other half of the video. It, I, I know how frustrating that can be. So I'm going to launch all the videos at the same time. So if you're seeing this first one, the links to the others will be in the description box below. If you happen to have seen number three and you want to see how it all started out, pop back to number one. Um, Mariah is not doing it as a set of videos. Um, Mariah is doing it as part of the PM Artist Studio Lives, which happen four times a week for PM Artist Studio. Um, I'll put a link to their website in the description box and you can see it all there as well. The details are there. It's, oh good grief, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, and I will not tell you times because it all depends on where you are in the world, but they're based in Texas. So it's whatever time they state on their announcement will be American Central Time. So um, so they're going to do it as part of, Mariah's going to do it as part of her lives, which she, she does Mariah makes on Monday. So she'll probably do it towards that unless P starts, her mother starts to go, oh, I want to have a go as well. And maybe the both of them will have a go. Who knows? Um, so know that that's going to happen. So. Um, this video is basically, I'm going to open this up and then talk through what I see in here. Can't imagine that's going to take that long because this isn't huge. Um, we may actually have to make some stuff. Um, I'll talk through my thought process anyway. So enough of me gossiping here. Uh, let's flip this camera around and let's get started. I'm excited. I like doing collaborations. They're fun. Um, I'm also intrigued to find out what Maria, Mariah's going to do with mine. I know what I said, Mariah. And I'm not going to tell you just in case Mariah hasn't started hers when this launches. Um, I'm excited to see it, though, because I sent her stuff that I think plays to her likes and styles. Let's just say that. But with some interesting little twists in there as well. So um, I don't know what Mariah's doing. It's just I'm I'm looking forward to watching the lives and see what she comes up with. So anyway, enough gossip, 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 Griffiths. So let's flip this over and take a look at what we got. So here we are, all nice and ready to go. Now I do know in here there's an envelope from Patricia that isn't part of um, this whole swap and make thing. So I need to look out for that. Oh, there's a perforation. Yeah, and as with every perforation, for me it doesn't perforate. Right, let's just pull this out of the packet. Okay, well I can read the article that into a cover, I think. 
Oh, big brown envelope. Love a big brown envelope. Oh, and an unused big brown envelope. Right, anything else in here? No. Right, let's have a quick read of this to make sure. Oh, I think this must be. Yeah, this is the bit off Patricia, so that needs to go somewhere else. Right, before we delve into that, I just need two seconds to read this. OK, lovely little message from Mariah, and she reminded me of something. We're also following the Makers Mixed Media Art and Artist Group theme for the month of April. And the, the theme is Flip Fly Flora Fauna. Say that with these teeth, I can tell you. Um, so there will be a hashtag. So if you actually, I'll put it in the description. It'll be in the link. You've got it. Um, so lots of stuff here. She's as excited as I am by the sound of it. Right, let's see what we've got. Okay. Not sure what tissue that is, but that's interesting. That will come to life when I put something on the background. Obviously gel prints. Oh, crow, I like the crow or the raven, whatever it was. Ooh, I like the colour of that. Now these will come to life depending on what I put in the background of these. Okay. What else have we got here? We've got more crow. We've got more crow. I like crow. I use crow a lot, so happy about that. Oh, what are these? Are these die cuts? What are these? These are die cuts, I think. They are die cuts. Okay, a whole bag full of fluorescent pink. And I'm sure Mariah did that on purpose because she knows I don't like pink. Mariah, I've got your number, girl. Um, the grass. Oh, this was a grass mask that PM Artist Studio make. That's going to be lovely along the bottom or something. I don't even have to colour it up. So I will have to trim this a little bit off. It's already annoying me and it's got to go. Because I know I'll catch it on something, that's why. OK, I will endeavour to put the links to these things in, in their original form. I'll try and get them into the description box below for you. OK, why do I know? I think I know what these are. These are stencils that have been covered. I can't remember what they're called, though. Obviously, it came in two sizes, might come in three. Again, that would make a fun pocket, wouldn't it? Oh, flies. I've got flies. Or are they bees? They look like flies to me. Well, I can honestly say I would never have thought of using flies. So a little bit of a challenge for me. Um, OK, they're the fly masks. Oh, there's one trying to get away. Ooh, this reminds me of Venus fly traps. Maybe the pl flies... Ooh, stop, Griffiths, you need to just look for a start. OK, so that's... interesting. Not, not something I would have reached for. This is going to be a challenge, but it's kind of meant to be. OK, what's this? Uh, Polynesian Island set of PM printables. Oh, they have printables. Well, I know they have printables, but I'm saying is I didn't know they were sending printables. OK, interesting. So these could become focal points. Oh, they've even got PM Artist Studio in the middle of the guitar. These could become focal points in the middle of the print, in the middle of ephemera, if I choose to do ephemera. Not really sure what I'm thinking at the moment. My my safety zone would be good to go to a journal to make a collection of ephemera or to do an accordion. Not 100% certain yet. OK, what's this? Oh, she did say she made me a little book. OK, right. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's cute. Hmm. That's kind of given me an idea. I wonder. Maybe if I use this as the jumping off point and actually make a bigger version of this, I have to root through my gel prints to decorate it. I wonder, yeah, maybe I do that. I don't know, that, that may that may become my inspiration for a larger one. 
Um, I have to think about that one. Right, and what is all this? Is this Julie Torrens? Okay. Oh, no, 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 it's printables. So I saw this. Julie Torrens has some really lovely uh, watercolour flower printables with um, Pierre Martin Studio. And my mind immediately leapt to the fact that this was them. But it's not. These are obviously by Pierre Martin Studio because their logo is right in the middle of it. Okay, all of these are interesting. Now, I don't know whether these are printed with an inkjet or a laser jet. Uh, laser printed so I like these so I think I may have to consider getting a getting them sealed in some way that's interesting okay so those could become journal cards I'm loving that color combo okay my mind is sort of going Polynesian island sort of feel to this or Hawaiian island or that sort of fresh, vibrant sort of colour scheme. Now, remember, I can use anything, nothing or all. Well, I can't use nothing because that would be rude. I love that colour scheme. It's one of my favourite colours, those. And that's a beautiful colour combination. And then the bigger people. Oh, there's more. So I could collage using these to make myself a master board. Right. There's, there's a chunk of stuff. So... I'm leaning towards the idea because it's appealing to me. Oh, mustn't forget that because I can cut those out and those are actually pieces as well. Right, this is beginning to spark an idea for me. I reckon if I made this large, like not large, large, but I mean, if these were A4, say, um, say about 11, 11 by 8 or 11 by 8 and a half panels, if I make them a card, I could do fabric hinges. I could then cover all of these with gel prints that I would do specifically for it. The inside, because if that's... That could have pockets, maybe double pockets. That could have tucks in it. The Yes. Okay, I, th I think, yes. I need to stop the video, I think, and have a bit of a think, which is obviously what this is about, and come back to you in a few minutes with a bit of a game plan and a bit of a think through. And I think I need to get a basket for all of this so that I actually know what I've got in front of me. And I'm happy about that. So thank you, Mariah. Right. Um, I'll be back in two seconds for you guys. It'll probably be about a day for me because I've got a really busy schedule today. And I wanted to film the first bit of this. But I'm liking this idea. I am liking this idea. I want to do some sort of closure on it, though. That would be... That needs a bit of thinking as far as closures go as well. So I'm enjoying that. So thank you very much, Mariah. Um, I look forward to getting on with this. And that, by the way, that those were the times that they do um, their lives each week. And that's Central America time. So it's Texas time. Um, this is their website, Pierre Martin Studio, Texas, USA. So it's www.piermartinstudio.com. That will take you through. They do have um, discount tiers as well on there. They have shipping options. They There's a lot on there. They do, they do stencils. They do masks. They do foam stamps. So lots of stuff for you guys to play with and look at. And I'm one of their designers. I'm one of their stable of designers. There's some very talented designers in there. So I'm going to put these into a basket and I need to get thinking. So see you in two seconds, guys. I'll hopefully have some ideas on, on, on the table by then. So here we are. It's about a week later. Um, and I've been playing around with this idea that Mariah sent me. And I like it, but it's just too small. And I thought, shall I make it bigger? And then I thought, mm, maybe not. So I then played around with other ideas that were sort of this kind of format. 
And a while ago, I'd been playing with the idea of zines. That's Z-I-N-E, or for my Americans, it's Z-I-N-E. They're, they're um, a one piece of paper that you fold in a certain way. You cut in the middle and they fold out and fold up to make a little booklet. And I ended up doing this, which is sort of like um, an accordion or... I don't know, just this, this sort of format, and I quite like that. But again, it was a bit small, and I made this one out of mixed media paper, which is what I had on hand, because why not use what you've got? And I thought, right, I just, I just want something slightly bigger, but I don't want it enormous. So I thought, you know what, I'm not going to go out and actually buy a bigger piece of max, mixed media paper. I'm going to do a look around and a shop within my own studio, which is what it is. Put this to one side. So, I found this. It's wrapping paper. It's, I think I must have got it in either the pound store or my local post office. It's a roll of wrapping paper. Um, it's got a grid on the back. It's what you wrap parcel, parcels with. And I cut my piece into nine and a half inches tall or 241 millimetres tall by 14 inches wide or 355 millimetres wide. And I did that because I wanted to create pages that are about four and three quarter inches tall by about three and a half inches wide, okay? And the reason I did that is I thought, right, if I double height, that will give me to, it'll make sense what I do. Anyway, and what I wanted to do, I thought, right, well, I, this is far too flimsy to do what I want to do. So I'm going to use that, um, another resource to create this. I'm going to collage into it, basically. But I'm collaging as a background. And then in the next video, because this is obviously going to be more than one video, I'm going to then do painted stuff onto it. And I looked around and thought, well, I'll use book pages. And then I spotted this, which is from a project I did... What month is it? In March, I did this. And it was a thing I did on my gel plate. And I used this colouring book, which I purchased purely for that project. Now, I don't do colouring books. Um, I I just, they don't do it for me. But you know what? The theme for this month is flip, fly, flora and fauna. And I thought, if I collage this with flower type images from this book, then whatever is seen will will make sense so let's just pull a few of these pages out and i'm going to be tearing them up and using them as collage elements and i'm looking for smaller type stuff now i'm not going to be using a huge amount probably only about four or five pages of this but i would much rather use it for this than it sit on my shelf like those are a definite must and those are quite good let's just work with us i can go on and actually use any of these but i just wanted to start using this or i can guarantee i'll find this in a couple of years time and go why is that on the shelf and not have used it so i'm just going to come in i'm going to tear these down a little bit just with a normal metal ruler not using a tear ruler and it could be that you've got something hanging around if you did want to duplicate this project you could actually do yourself. Now I'm going to continue to tear the edges off here and in the aim of trying to save video footage um, I'm probably going to fade here and I'll come back when they're all torn out. So that's the majority of the excess white pieces torn off these. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and harvest sections out of this to glue onto here. Now I'm going to glue one side and then I'm going to flip it over and collage the other side. I'm only going to collage one side with you on screen because I can't imagine how boring it's going to get if you want to see me collage both sides. And then in the, the next video, we'll start when all of this is dried off. Now, I'm going to use a new product for me, which was recommended to me, which is extra heavy gel medium. And this is by Amsterdam. Um, I've not used this before. I have opened it up to see the consistency and it is quite heavy bodied. I'm going to leave this on here just because it will help seal it. And I'm going to use a large palm brush by 
Tim Holtz, doesn't matter which company it is, you could use any brush for this. And now the sun comes out. Why is it whenever I film on a morning, the sun comes out? Anyway, the reason I'm using this is I wanted to find out, I can use it as a glue and use it to seal because I'm going to do some wet techniques over these and I wanted to make sure that this isn't meant to carry wet medium and I wanted to make sure basically that it, it was protected a bit. So I'm just going to come and take pieces of this off and manicure it slightly just so that it kind of makes sense as to where I'm putting it. Um, as I said, I'm putting these on here basically as a base layer, but they may or may not even be seen in the final thing. Now let's get a bit of this under here so I don't actually get this all over my mat. And I'm just going to put on a reasonable amount. Now, this is heavy bodied, as, as it says on the tin, which I believe means that it's going to be quite strong. It is quite hard to paddle out, should we say. I'm going to put it on. I'm just using like a store card or something to smooth it down. Now, in the aims of getting it not looking uniform all over, although this is going to be cut up, so come on, Griffiths, get it together. Um, it is going to be cut up, so I think I'm going to be okay. I do apologise for the sunshine. But you know what? Nothing I can do about that. So let's just put that on there. Yeah, I'm going to use acrylic paints over the top of these once, once both sides of this are done. And I will give you as many dimensions as I can possibly give you as I go along of the things I'm doing. Right, I quite like... Hopefully I'm in shot, just in shot. I think it'd take little bits off here. I don't want it to be completely uniform and for anyone who's telling me I'm using my metal ruler upside down and doing it on purpose, if I use it this way there's a very thin gap between the surface and the metal ruler and the paper tends to tear in a weird way. If I put this down this way I've got something to grip it with so it's not going to move and this is then flat on the surface which means it's going to tear properly. So just in case anyone thinks they have to tell me how to use a tear ruler. So, which I have no, no problem with being told how to do things because goodness knows I don't know everything, but I do know one and two things. I'm also assuming because this is a coloring book that the paper is a, maybe a little bit more robust than just a general book page. I did like this. Let's see if I can get another piece off this that I really want to use. Um, let's do it this way, it'll be easier. Sorry, mutter, mutter, mutter on my behalf. As you know by now, it's all basically part of my thought process. I tend to speak things out loud because for me, that really helps with the way I think. Um, if I try and inter internalise all of my thought processes, then I don't, it doesn't seem to make as much sense to me. And to be honest, even when I'm not filming with you guys, I do exactly the same thing. I talk, I talk to myself purely to make sure that it's just making sense. Right, let's go on to another flower. Um, let's take that piece out of there. It's quite a nice piece. Let's manicure it down slightly. I'm interested to see how this is going to turn out. I, I sort of have a plan, but I don't sort of have a plan, if that will make sense to anyone except me. Um, I have an idea, let's put it that way, that I'm kind of working towards, but with everything I do, I'm quite willing to modify my plan should I need to. I will take a little bit more off that. So let's see, I keep sticking to this mat, but it's better to stick to this and stick to my grey mat beneath it. Now I'm hoping that once I've got a layer on the other side and this has got matte medium on it, that it is going to be quite robust without being too thick because this has to be folded. 
I'm not overly concerned that I'm actually going over the edge at this point because what I'm going to do is once this is fully dried I will come in and trim the edges before I do the other side so anything that's sticking up like this I will I will trim off later right let's see let's go on to these I quite like this this was an interesting shape let's so tear it partially through I'm not worried if things aren't absolutely perfect. You know me by now, trying to strive away from perfection. Right, and I will cut that bit off later. I seem to be very working to the left here. I think it's because I've got all of the spare bits of paper on that side. So, about there. So, um, it's going to be interesting because... It's a bit like when you make a master board and you cut it up and you reveal it. Um, it's kind of going to be a bit like that with this, because once, once I've done the whole thing and then I folded it and cut it up and then attached the two halves to each other, it's going to be interesting to see what I have ended up with. Um, I think I'll just strip of those. Where that ruler gone? Yeah, I don't know what it is about colouring books and me. I think part of it may have to do with my childhood. Um, when I was a child, I was a chronic asthmatic. Like, well, let's put it this way. My parents were told I wouldn't live past the age of five. Well, obviously, they don't know me that well. Um, they, they did tell my parents to expect the worst. And... Um, so they did the best they could. Um, but because I was a very poorly child and sometimes hospitalised because of it, what happened was I had lots of lots of colouring books and jigsaw puzzles and things I could do while being in bed or things I could do on my lap if I was sat in a chair. So I think that's where a lot of my creativity comes from in that I was always having to be doing something. Because um, I think I would have gone absolutely stare crazy if if I hadn't been doing something. Right, let's take this. Um, let's take you off there. So I think because I was not forced, but because I did so many things like colouring books and stuff like that as a child, they kind of don't really have pleasant memories for me. Um, I should just stick that right across there. So I, I think I may be associating colouring books with that. Also, I just, if I'm going to be sitting down doing something, I'd rather be doodling or doing art or fussy cutting or something that I deem a little more productive. And that's no insult to those who do colouring books because I've seen some amazing colouring books. And I know they're great for your mental health. They're, they're great for keeping your hands occupied when maybe you can't do anything else at the time. So there's a lot of value in them. It just, it, it doesn't please everybody. It's, it's like, as you know, I, I, don't, I don't get on well with neurographic art. Um, for no other reason than it just, I... It's supposed to be calming and it, it didn't it didn't calm me, I can assure you. It, it got me wound up. And I think it's because I was just trying to be a perfectionist with it. And that, as we know, is not what that is about. Let's take that bit off there. So I'm gonna end up with a whole pile of mismatched um lines on here. But what it will do, it will give me a white surface with black lines which means that any lines that do show through in the final in the final pages um at least those lines will be flower or floral shaped which means it'll help me with the theme now i was going to do this with my original um gel medium which is this brand, which I normally use. Um, it would have worked equally as well. I just 
seriously, I just want to try out this, this newer brand for me. Um, because I've got some larger projects coming up that I want to make sure I've got some really robust medium for. So not, not cheap, but apparently it goes a long way. So right, I just need a few more strips. Right, that's basically just stalks. Um, let's see if I can take this out of here. Discard that bit. Put that off the end of there. Yeah, that'll go okay there. As with everything, and I've said it a thousand times, and I'll say it a thousand times again, I'm absolutely certain of that. It's a case of trust the process time. Um, because if I don't trust the process, I'm not going to get anywhere, am I? Right. Um, because my mind will immediately say, mm, going to fail, let's stop. And we know where that leads to. I don't. I don't want to stop. I want to finish and there is a difference right so okay, almost there i don't mind white space because there is going to be other stuff over the top of this um, i'm going to be using stencils i'm not going to be using um texture paste because i i don't know that that's the right thing to do in the long run um, and I say that because um, as it's almost, a, well, it's going to be a little booklet, I know that texture paste tends to like to stick to itself once it's dry. It, if pages are meeting and, and I don't want to give myself a problem moving forward. Right, that's a little bit of flour can be left somewhere else. But this one piece here, I just chop that down. That'll do, that'll go right across there. So what I've done is I've just used my coloring book to create myself an abstract background. And I'm not 100% certain where the folds and the cuts and the pages will fall, but, and I'm okay about this looking this bare. I'm really, really not worrying about that at all. Um, because again, there's gonna be paintwork on this. So let's take that out of the way. So I think what we're gonna do, let's put, that in a damp cloth so it doesn't dry out and put the lid on on the medium I'm not gonna let that dry out right I need to let this fully dry um, I need to put a coat over the top I haven't done that yet I will put a coat of this over the top just to seal all of this then I will let it dry I will turn it over I'll trim off all the excess pieces and then I will do exactly what I've just done on this side and then I will see you for video number two okay so in video number two we'll take it to the next stage um and we'll just take it from there guys okay so hopefully you've enjoyed this so far I don't know where it's going don't know what it's going to look like but I'm going to have fun with it whatever I do okay so I will see you in part two, which will be linked in the description box below, guys. See you there. Bye-bye now.